Welcome to Electronics and More. Today's video is going to be part two of a previous video on my metal detector. Now if you have not seen the video showing exactly how this was made, then what you should do is check that out first. The link is right here. You could pause the video that you're looking at right now, watch that video first. When that video is completed, then you can go back to watching this video. This video is going to show you modifications that I made to have the completed metal detector setup that you're looking at right here. In the previous video, you saw the original coil, which is right here, the smaller one. This is the larger coil that you saw in the previous video. It was blue. I had nothing connected to it, no wires. I was just showing you some testing on it. What I did is I found a flat PVC cap. I cut it off, bonded it to the top of that PVC ring with the windings. I then painted over the windings with varnish, allowed that to dry, and then I wrapped the winding all the way around with PVC tape and sealed it with E6000. This is a half inch PVC male adapter. And on the other side was a female adapter, which I cut so I'm able to thread this down tight and have it fit securely into the PVC cap. Everything is sealed, highly water resistant. As long as the pipe is inside this fitting you see right here, water should not be able to enter any part of this coil. Now I also mentioned in the other video that I wanted to have two separate coils and the ability to swap them out. Now originally, this one here was hardwired in. And because I have two separate search coils, I want to be able to switch between the two. So what I did is I cut the wire out of the housing, and on each search coil, I added the USB male adapter. The wire is soldered onto the adapter. The first layer of heat shrink has glue, and then there's two more layers over the connection to act as a restraint to protect against damaging the wires where they're soldered on. You can see on here, there's the matching part in female. This is the other search coil, has the matching end. I tried both out and both work extremely well. Now there are a couple of other changes that I made. One of them being right over here. This potentiometer has been replaced. The original one was a linear taper. It only adjusted about three quarters of a turn. And the problem was I could not get a precise adjustment on the threshold for the audio, which is directly tied to sensitivity. So what I did is I made this potentiometer here, which you'll see in another video how I did it. And it is now a 10 turn potentiometer. And I have very precise control over the threshold and sensitivity. The one other change that I made was I adjusted the frequency of the metal detector. Previously it was 12.5 kilohertz and I arrived at 20 kilohertz as being the most sensitive frequency for this metal detector. Using the small coil you see here is 20 kilohertz. Because the inductance of the smaller coil is not exactly the same as the larger coil, this one here, this one will run at a slightly higher frequency of around 28 kilohertz. How I adjusted that was very simple. I adjusted the value of the capacitor, which is in parallel across the transmitting coil. Let me plug this in. All right. I'm going to take off this so you can hear it. I'm going to lift this up now out of the way, push it up high so there's no metal around. I'm going to turn this on and show you how I could adjust it, how precise, just to where the threshold is a very slight motor boating sound coming off of this potentiometer. Right there is your most sensitive setting. It'll find the rebar on the floor. over here.
very stable now. Before, if I touched it slightly, because it was a linear taper, I had a very hard time getting this setting that you see here. And I can adjust it if I have to. It's so easy to do now. Shut that off. Now I'm going to unplug this coil and plug in the other search coil to show you. Unplug that. Plug that one in. Goes in nicely. Same way. Three layers of heat shrink. First layer with glue. I'm going to turn this on. Keep it out of the way like that. I'm going to go near my control box. Extremely sensitive. All right, let me adjust the sensitivity to the most sensitive setting. Pretty far, it's about five inches away for a nickel. Six inches, maybe. Further, it's about at least six inches there. Let's try the quarter. See, right now it's right at the threshold of the most sensitive setting. That's a dime. With the headset on, you could hear deeper targets. That's about four inches away. Penny, right there. Right there. Right there. Let's try a Bahamian dime right here. Pretty far away, about six inches. So you see this coil works fine. We plug the other one back in and show you that still works fine. Okay. Now when I turn it on, I'm going to have to adjust this setting to compensate for the difference in inductance between the two coils. Here you go here. There we go. That's what I normally use when I go searching. Nickel. Quarter right there. Try the nickel. Right there, it's getting it. Right there. It's very hard for you to hear the subtle changes, but when my headset's on, I could hear that out there. Penny, right there. So that's it. You now see the completed metal detector. This project is done. There's nothing else I'm going to be doing to it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlists as well. Thank you very much for watching.